Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna film a get ready with me with some new makeup products that I picked up from the Sephora sale. So really quick, I do wanna talk about the two skincare items I picked up from the sale. The one I was really interested in is this new Tatcha the Silk Peony Eye Cream that they came out with. And basically it's a melting eye cream for all skin types. I've used this a few times. I like it so far. As you can see, this is a really tiny jar. You get 0.5 fluid ounces and it says it has a six month shelf life. Now, if you guys have eye cream recommendations, please send them my way because I want to make sure that my under eyes are hydrated. And I feel like Tatcha's a good brand, but most of their products I don't end up like loving. I have the um, dewy skin, like water cream, like a lotion on my face and I like that one. I thought it would be so good for me in the winter time but I felt like it honestly clogged my pores. So I was a little bit hesitant to keep reusing that but so far I like this but I would like to pick up more, you know, like under eye and eye creams just to like make sure that my under eye is always hydrated. And then I was on the hunt for a new toner. So this one actually sold out a few times during the sale and I got the notification that it was in stock so I picked up two of them. I like to keep toners um, in my master bathroom as well as down here in my beauty room. So I picked up two. So this is the Laneige Cream Skin Toner and Moisturizer. This is for normal to dry skin and basically it seems like it's super hydrating so that's why I picked it up because I feel like my skin can always drink up any kind of hydration I throw its way so that's why I picked these two items up and I know some of you saw my makeup wish list and had asked about the eye cream so just so you know I did pick it up I do think it's okay I'm not sure that it's like a okay run out and buy it but those are my thoughts on there and then I did buy some makeup items so I wanted to do like a little demo situation and just do my makeup so the two eyeshadow palettes, palettes I picked up are this guy this is the lunar beauty strawberry dream eyeshadow palette and i have not even opened this this is manny's makeup line and yeah i saw somebody talk about having picked this up during the sale and she said it smelled like strawberry shortcake i think and my friend Britt clark uh loves this palette and talks about it a lot so i thought let me pick it up during the sale and i was very happy the timing was perfect and it's not that I wouldn't pay full price for this. It's just like, why not pick it up on a sale if I can? So um, I'm very interested in this. It kind of gives me the Queen of Hearts palette vibes. Um, I was really curious about this blue diamond shade, which is like a beautiful duochrome. And it does smell like strawberries. So if you're sensitive to smell, you might want to be a little bit cautious. Gosh, I don't know which eyeshadow palette I want to use. I kind of want to play with this and see um what that's like but the other palette i have been using this is the jackie Ina x abh palette and as you can tell i've dug into it a little bit i haven't really p played with like the fun shades i've been kind of sticking with uh, the neutrals honestly this is a very neutral palette in my opinion there's no shades in here that are like you know overly colorful or anything it's definitely one of those like sultry type or soft glam type palettes that abh is known for it's just a solid palette you know what you're getting um and you can just you know go into this and create a daytime look you know if you want to go to work or if you want to do something smoky and sultry for the nighttime this is a um, good palette for that and then I actually really like this packaging. I'm not the biggest fan of Jackie Ina, but I did buy this because I love ABH and I love when they do this type of palette because it just fits so perfectly on the shelf, which is why I'm kind of bummed that they're doing the Norvina Pro palette and they're making it this different shape. I'm a little bit bummed that they decided to go so, oh, why am I putting this back in the box? It's so hard to get out of the box <laughs> to like, Oh my god, struggle fist. Look at this. Anyway, um, I'm kind of bummed that they decided to do that other packaging. Not that it's not beautiful. I saw Mel Thompson talk about it, um, saying that the packaging was gorgeous. But I just, I, I'm just i just so appreciative that ABH has managed to maintain this aesthetic, but still keep their palettes pretty unique. 
Um, it just makes it so easy to store. Whereas like, you know, when you're dealing with like Jeffree Star, all the palettes are such different shapes and sizes. It's kind of irritating to store, which I know it sounds like really nitpicky of me, but just something to, you know, talk about. So I got some of my base makeup products in here. I will show you some of the other things I picked up. As we go along, I just want to prep my eyeballs really quick. Always use the Makeup Revolution uh, cut crease canvas. I really, I bought this because somebody said it's a good dupe for the P. Louise base. Um, but then I was like on, I think, P. Louise's Instagram. And I'm like low-key wanting to buy um, the P. Louise base. Um, I believe they ship out of the UK, um, but I just want to know, like, what what do people love about it? I, th I think I've heard that it's just, like, a very sticky base, um, so people really like it to do, like, very sophisticated, like, makeup looks, um, but I'm just wondering, like, for me, like, pretty average human, would I, need, like, benefit from something like that or no, but... Yeah, I've just heard so many people say, like, P. Louise base, P. Louise base. And I'm like, Ugh, do I need P. Louise base? <laughs> like, what the heck? Um, so I did make a repurchase um, of my favorite liquid liner. This is the Pat McGrath um, Perma Precision Liquid Eyeliner. I really like this, so I did pick it up. The one I purchased prior, I've had for so long, and it works so well. I also placed a little M Cosmetics order, and I tried the M Cosmetics Illustrative Eyeliner with the brush tip, and I wanted to tell you guys that I hate that eyeliner. Definitely not worth it. I picked it up in a bundle because I was dying to try one of these. This is her new serum blush formula in the shade Sunset Sky. I do want to use this today just so you guys can see what it looks like on my skin tone. But the eyeliner was so gross and I'm like, no. I think this eyeliner sells for like 20 bucks. And I just want to make like a little PSA to my friends watching this. Do not buy this. It is not a good eyeliner. It's very... Um, it's not opaque enough in my opinion. I like my eyeliner to, you know, be really nice and opaque. And this one is just very, like, watered down looking. So I was pretty disappointed about that. Okay, so let's see here. I think I decided I'm going in with the Lunar Beauty palette. Because um, I've seen so many people talking about Jackie Ina. So why not me be the different snowflake that I am and use this palette. I kind of want to swatch it, but I also kind of don't want to swatch it. It looks so beautiful. Um, I like that there's like this neutral row and then there's a pop of color row, which is really, really cool. And this yellow shade looks really fun. Ah, uh, what to do first, what to do first. Okay, I'm going to pick up my favorite Wayne Goss brush. Ugh, I need... I need to buy more of these. Like, I want to back above this brush because it's so good. So I'm going to go into the shade Skyline, which is oh, so pretty um, and has that little moon star situation. And I just want to place that in my crease just to start setting the Makeup Revolution base and see kind of what color of payoff we can get from that. This is a really pretty shade. I've never really used a color like this is like a very pink sherbet type shade okay i like that a lot now i'm gonna go into the next shade which is called sunrise it's like another darker coral shade so just sticking to the same brush and i'm gonna start off with putting it in the outer half and then just kind of pull it in and blend it so there's a long weekend coming up here in the U.S. of A. Um, do you guys have any fun plans for Labor Day weekend? I don't have anything going on, but the week after that, I'm going to be in Nashville for a party, a bachelorette party. So if any of you guys are in the Nashville area, you have to leave a comment or in Tennessee, uh, leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite thing to do in your home state or town is because I think that'd be fun or if any of you have been to Nashville before because I'm sure you have because it's like the place to go these days for 
bachelorette parties. I swear everyone's going to Nashville. So I'd be so curious to know what you guys' thoughts are on Nashville. Okay, so I really like that shade Sunrise. It's like a, it looks more coral, like a hot coral shade, which is perfect. And now I just want to deepen it up just a tish. And I think I'll just use the, say, the shade Sunset. Um, but I'm going to switch to a smaller blending brush. This is the Sonia G Cre um, Crease Pro. And I'm just going to go into Sunset. And I'm just going to place that on the outer corner as well. I feel like the blues are really like a good choice in here too. Um, but I kind of wanted to create something with the neutral setup because I just was feeling that. Um, I want to see how pigmented these are. I haven't actually bought any eyeshadow palettes from Lunar Beauty before. Um, so this is my first venture into Lunar Beauty's eyeshadow palettes. I did pick up one of his highlighters when I was at the Morphe store a couple of months ago, and I do like that. I'm happy that it seems like Manny was able to put um, all this drama behind him. He's definitely like canceled in my mind for a long time. I've always kind of felt like he was a social climber. Um, but that's not really a reason not to buy from a brand, you know? And, um, honestly, like, I don't know. There's so many. Anyway, I don't even want to get into it. So, um, I'm pretty much done with my crease. That was really freaking quick. Everything blended well. I love how pink this looks. Now for the big debate is what are we going to do on the lid? Do I go, you know, monochromatic and go with Ruby Skies? Do I go contrasting and go with Horizon? or this other shade Nightfall is beautiful too. I think what I'm gonna do is go in with Ruby Skies just cause I wanna like match with the shimmer, uh, with my matte look or the matte shadows. So I'm gonna go in without putting the brush. I wanna see how pigmented these shadows are um, without wetting them. This one has big glitter flecks in it. And uh, it's going on okay. I kind of like how that looks. It's very chunky flecks of glitter. Okay, I love that a whole lot. Now I want to try something out and I want to go into Blue Diamond. I'm just going to stick with the same brush. And this is the Duo Chrome. I just want to tap that on over the shade and kind of give it like a purple look. I love doing that with duochromes because they kind of have a clear base, but then they add another level of dimension to the eyeshadow look. And I think this would be like a dreamy in a corner highlight. So I will remember to lay that down as well and see. So that is the eyeshadow look for now. So we're going to pause on that and we're going to flip to a foundation that I picked up from the Sephora sale. So this one is the Fenty Beauty, what is this called? The Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. And this is 1.08 fluid ounces from Fenty. I actually do like this foundation. I don't know necessarily that this is full on longwear. I think the Pro Matte is definitely more longwear for me. I have dry skin, but I can wear the matte one. I'm actually quite surprised when people say they think it's too drying. Um, usually I put on either a lotion or I'll put on a, you know, oil, a face oil, and then I'm good to go. So I um, am always kind of like, skeptical when people say it's too drying for them but you know different things work so differently on everyone so it's hard to say <laughs> to be honest but I don't yeah I don't think it's that mattifying uh but I really like that foundation the pro filter matte is like one of my holy grails this one is okay I don't love but I think it's great for like an everyday like when you don't need like full on, full blown, like matte skin that's gonna last. Cause like the pro matte, I think it's like a great, like, you know, going out foundation for me, or if I were needing to have like a flawless face for like something all day, 
I would definitely consider going with that one. This one I just didn't feel like, from the few times I've worn it um, through a work day, I don't think it has been as long lasting for me. Even the, um, um, Pat McGrath foundation, that is a very long wearing foundation. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how well that foundation will cling on to your skin. So I got this in the same shade as my, the matte one. This is the shade 370. So here is what the packaging looks like. And I like that it is a tube, um, just cause it's easy to travel with and stuff like that. It's not gonna break and yeah kind of low maintenance that way but I have heard people say they don't really like it in the tube because um, I don't know like how easy it'll be to get product out when you're closer to the bottom so I actually really really enjoy the Fenty concealer especially when I first got it I got it in the shade 330 I got this in January you guys and I can't help but feel like mine has like really dried out um, so I'd be really curious to hear if you guys have this concealer and have used it recently, do you feel like it's dried out? Because I don't know, I just feel like it's so dry feeling and it's kind of odd, you know? <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, I don't know if I'm just paranoid, but since I've been using the Fenty foundations, I thought, let me whip out the concealer and kind of do like a little shop my stash and use the concealer but um i was kind of like oh wow it's not it's much more drying than i remember it being i remember it being a lot creamier i guess is what i'm trying to say so anyway there's that and then i want to use the bronzer i've been trying to pan this is like shocking stuff so next i want to use the bronzer i've been trying to pan you guys ready for some pan porn? Look at that. I'm so proud of myself. I've had this bronzer for quite some time and I've been trying to pan it for a long time as well. And I was like, you know what? This is the summer that I pan the casino bronzer from NARS. I have so many other bronzers that I want to get to. And so I'm like, I'm gonna pan this sucker and that's gonna be that. Like I'm not gonna, you know, I'll keep putting it off. And I'm really excited about it. Um, so yeah, it's been really exciting to do that. So, and I love this for tan girls, like one of the best tan girl friendly bronzers in my opinion. And one that has been around a lot longer. Cause like Anastasia, Fenty, you know, all these brands that recently have come out with bronzers didn't always have tan girl friendly bronzers. I'm always grateful, but I feel like NARS was one of the first. So, okay, now I'm going to show you guys the M Cosmetics blush in Sunset Sky. I am on the fence about this product. I think this is going to be beautiful if you do a lot of like no makeup makeup days and you um, are like a really light skin tone. Like I can see this being like really pretty on Hannah Louise Poston any of my Caucasian beauty guru friends. Um, but on me, I'm just not sure yet. And maybe I just don't know how to use the product um, as well. Like, you know, maybe I just need to do some experimenting. Uh, but if you put too much on, it definitely looks like a clown. Um, so I just do a little drop. And then I've been using this Morphe M436 brush. Um, it's like a like a stippling brush and so there you can see it with and then without so there is definitely like a dewy um, glow to it which is beautiful but I don't know I feel like this is so high maintenance for you know my lifestyle like I you know don't see myself doing this on a daily basis to be honest and I know a lot of you have been curious and this pump this freaking dropper isn't the greatest either but I know um you guys have again like when you saw my wish list video and I said this was on my wish list a lot of you had commented saying you were curious and 
I definitely try to give you my honest opinion that I had tried it a few times and I wasn't like nuts about it to the point where I would be like you know how people like on YouTube will be like just go and get it it's so good like you need this in your life this one I'm like eh it'll be okay like you're not gonna die without it you know so I just want to set my brow bone here and just put some um, shadow so I'm just going into my Viseart neutral palette what is this called the warm matte palette and just setting that so that nothing hangs on there but yeah it's very glowy very beautiful Definitely something different for me, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I would say you guys need it. Um, and then I'm just going in with the ABH powder and setting my under eye. I actually was watching Norena's video on the ABH powders, and she kind of said some really smart stuff about the powder. She said she made the container big so you could put a big brush on there, which I actually really appreciate. I didn't even think of... Like, I didn't even think of that when I um, tried this um, powder for the first time. But honestly, that is so convenient that you can, like, get a big-ass brush in there. Um, some powders, like the Pat McGrath one, her powder brush is so big, but yet her container is so tiny. So that's low-key irritating. Like, why did you do that? And then I've been itching to pick this up. This is the new Peach Fizz Highlighter from... ABH and I have not tried this yet. I've tried a lot of the product I picked up during the sale but I was kind of like waiting to use this because honestly like loose powders kind of freak me out and uh, I did try ooh I did try one of the ABH um, loose highlighters um, when they first did loose highlighters and I didn't love it, <laughs> so I returned it, um, and I was like nervous, but I thought this color was so pretty that I wanted it. Um, and this is in the shade Peach Fizz. I don't know if I said that. It's like a pretty peachy color. Okay, so there we are. We are highlighted to the gods and I need to do my brows and I will be right back. Okay, so I decided to go blue in my lower lash line. So I grabbed my Linda Hallberry eyeliner in Cool Mood and I threw that into my waterline and then I'm going to grab this Sigma Precision Firm Blender E42 looks like that and I think this blue is actually the exact same shade as the Linda Hallberry uh, blue and that's in the shade Haze and I'm just gonna slowly blend that into my lower lash line And now to just give it a slight gradient, I'm going to go into Blue Sky, which is the lighter blue, and throw that in the inner half. This brush is a little too flimsy, but that's okay. I'm going to hop in with this Sonia G brush. It's more like a flat paddle, but I'm just going to press some blue. And I really like that. And then I'm going in with a like a pencil brush. This is from ColourPop. It's an E10. And remember I said I wanted to try some blue diamond in the inner corner. Definitely feels like a pressed glitter type um, shadow because it like pushes in. It's like kind of spongy. I feel like a unicorn and that's what matters so <laughs> okie dokie god this palette smells so good I don't know the last time I played with a scented palette I think maybe the what palette was it this is the gingerbread spice palette perhaps I don't know 
Okay, so I heard Angelica call Kat Von D, Kat Von D Z's, Kat Von D Z's, that's what she said, which like totally cracked me up. This is one of the products I have from her. This is a Locket Makeup Setting Mist. I bought this because I heard so many good things about this back in the day. So I picked it up during a different Sephora sale and it went in my little setting spray pile and I never touched it after that. I'm like, oh gosh, I should just, you know, pan this. So I'm trying to pan it, but it was just funny because I'm like, I have so many setting sprays that I need to use up. So I'm trying to work my way through them and try them out at different times. And I'm like low key doing like a shop my stash. Um, of course, I feel like I always have a new eyeshadow palette to try out, but when it comes to my other products, I am kind of like attempting to do a shop my stash. So I have been trying the Benefit Bad Girl Bang Mascara and I've heard um, so many people talk about this mascara on YouTube. So I picked it up during the Nordstrom Mascara sale that they do every uh, couple of times a year. And I really like this mascara. I think it is better after you use it a few times like it really kind of thickens up a little bit which is nice at first it's like very watery so I don't necessarily love that when it's watery but now that it's like had a few um weeks to kind of be exposed to the air it's um a little bit better at like separating my lashes and really thickening them up which I really like and this um Giga Black Mascara from MAC is like barely holding on. I really just need to replace it, but I don't want to. <laughs> and the Giga Black is my like favorite lower lash line mascara. I could probably get away with using the Bad Girl Bang in my lower lash line as well, but I've gotten spoiled because I like the brush of the Giga Black, so. Yeah, these are my 99 problems. Um, but I really, really like how this one works after I gave it a couple of days because at first it was so runny. I was like, oh God, no, but I like it. Okay, so I did pick up some new liquid lipsticks as well. Um, during the sale, I picked up the two Melt liquid lipsticks that I told you guys I wasn't gonna buy because of course, why wouldn't I? This is the shade Golden and it's like this weird golden it's almost like a concealer nude for really dark skin tones. Do you guys see it? It's right here on my skin tone. It's like a mustardy, baby pukey color. I actually don't love the Melt Liquid Lipstick Formula. That's what I've realized. It's very liquidy, and I don't know. I don't, I don't love it. I'm going to try it a little bit more, but I don't know. This is a shade Ginger, which I also told you guys I wasn't going to buy, that I have a million shades of, but no, I bought it anyway. And then this is the M Cosmetics. Um, lip cloud, infinite lip cloud in the shade Faded Clementine. And I picked this up because I bought the blush and the two eyeliners in a set. And my friend Hannah Louise Poston raves about these. I like it. It's a very non-intrusive the formula it's very light it, it literally does feel like a cloud but it's not like something i've never felt before because i think the ofra liquid lipstick also feels like this my absolute favorite thing about this though is the applicator because it has like it has like a little it almost looks like a little chair so it it hugs your lip perfectly and i don't necessarily think that shape is unique but there's nothing in my collection very recently that I know that does that, so I really, really appreciate that. So that is the lip I decided to wear with this eyeshadow look. So I'm going to clean up a little bit, and I will be right back. Okay, guys, so here is the final look. I just threw on some hoops because, like, what kind of Karen Harris makeup video would this be if I didn't have any earrings on? And I just totally smudged the <laughs> mocha hot mess you guys anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video I tried to pepper in some mini reviews on these products that I had recently purchased almost everything I have tried previously except the of course the palette I use this was 
definitely a first impressions on the Luna Beauty palette and first impressions on the Peach Fizz highlighter as well from Anastasia Beverly Hills, but most everything was stuff I have been testing out through the week. My Sephora order came so fast, I was actually really impressed, which makes me wonder if the sale was maybe not so busy for them because I usually feel like when there's a Sephora sale, it takes forever for me to get my packages. So interesting to see kind of where the trends are these days as far as what people are buying, not buying. You know, there's so many people that are fatigued with makeup releases, which I can sort of relate to as well, except I swear I'm trying to do a no buy in September and October and then Pat McGrath had to like release a palette in September and I'm like, really, Pat, really? And then I saw Angie has a collab coming out with Davina this week, which is gorgeous. And I just saw that Juvia's Place announced the Warrior 3 palette and it's set to launch very soon, which makes me think it's coming out in the next couple weeks because Juvia's definitely tends to not sneak peek too far in advance. And then I saw the Norvina palette and I saw the new Charlotte Tilbury stuff is gonna, it's out already on Charlotte Tilbury's website, but I'm hoping to buy it on a site where I can return it because I'm not sure about my shade match with Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm gonna wait and see, but yeah, so many new makeup launches coming up and it's, it's nutty. It's so nutty um, how many things have launched and I really enjoy, for the most part, everything I picked up from the Sephora sale. The only thing I was kind of meh about are these Melt Liquid Lipsticks. We'll see how I feel about them after I try them a few more times. But yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. I'm sorry this outro was so, so long. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in my next one soon. Also, don't forget, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you picked up from the Sephora sale because I'd love to hear from you guys. And I will see you in my next one soon. Bye!